When the original four-door coupe body style came out about 12 years ago, it really sparked a controversy among enthusiasts because manufacturers insisted on calling it a coupe when it in fact had doors in the back. Now, although Volkswagen wasn't technically the first to market with this body style, the original Passat CC was designed to be a sleeker, sportier version of the conventional Passat sedan. Now, over the years, the Passat CC became the CC, but it really just got old in the marketplace, which is why I'm standing by that vehicle's replacement. To test this all new sedan, I'm out here in Ojai, California to drive the all new 2019 Volkswagen RT on it now rides on the ubiquitous MQB platform. It sports standard turbocharged power and available four motion all wheel drive. Now VW says this is the flagship of their entire lineup, but with so much technology and luxury packed into this sleek sedan, the big question I want answered, is this really just the flagship of the VW lineup or is it more like a budget Audi A7? That's what we're here to find out. When a manufacturer claims a vehicle is the flagship of their lineup, you better believe the design is going to reflect that. So you can see for the all new 2019 Arteon, I think VW really hit the nail on the head with this thing. I think it's the best looking sedan in the VW lineup and quite possibly the Audi lineup. You'll have to let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the look, but you can see the front fascia of my particular SEL premium tester really stands out, especially in this bright yellow color with the black accents. All Arteons will come standard with the company's full LED headlights where you'll have an LED low, an LED high beam, an LED turn signal, or an LED running lights. There's two strips. I really like this small detail where the LED running light uh, connects perfectly with the chrome slats in the grille. I also like the subtle R-Line badge. The R-Line package also gives you this kind of more aggressive lower skirt that's painted in black with the C-shape. I think it looks really attractive in this particular color. It makes the vehicle look low and wide, which is important for a flagship sedan. When you look at the side profile of the all-new Arteon, you can see VW really nailed the proportions of this car. It has that sleek sloping roof line, uh, but it doesn't look quite as curvaceous or as controversial as like what Mercedes does on their CLS or CLS lay four-door coupe. Now let me first talk about the wheels. These are the 20-inch wheels that are part of the R-Line Sport package. If you guys go for a base SE, you'll have an 18. The SELs will have a 19. And then of course the 20s on this one, which are riding on 245 series tires. That's like an $1,800 option if you guys want to add the R-Line Sport package. Now uh, the rest of the profile you can see, they really had to stretch the length of this car to make it look like a flagship. Its wheelbase uh, at 111 inches long is five inches longer than the previous generation Volkswagen CC. And its overall length at around 191 inches long is also about two inches longer than the old CC. This is now the longest sedan in the VW lineup. It's a little bit longer than the Passat conventional sedan. And if you're gonna compare it to like a Kia Stinger, this is about an inch longer than the Stinger, uh, but about five inches longer than the Audi A5 Sportback, but about four inches shorter than the A7 Sportback. So you can see uh, Volkswagen really uh, sized this thing right in between uh, several key models in their lineup. And I think they got the proportions like, right. I also really like the panoramic sunroof that comes with the SEL trims. It's kind of got that black painted roof, which is really only a half size roof. But overall, um, the design and look of this thing is really going to stand out for years to come. From the rear of the new Arteon, you can see VW went with a clean, sleek, and modern appearance without any of the droopy elements that kind of plagues the Mercedes products. I really like it with the R-Line package that includes this subtle black rear lip spoiler, these standard full LED taillights with the LED turn signals, and then the clean integrated uh, dual chrome exhaust tips, which are mounted into the lower part of the rear fascia. I also like the Arteon spelled out. There's a subtle four motion badge to tell you that this is the all wheel drive model. Now, surprise, surprise, even though it looks like a sedan, the Arteon is actually a hatchback. That's right, it's a hatchback just like the Kia Stinger and the Regal Sportback. And the cargo capacity in this vehicle is massive. Now, first thing I wanna talk about, that power rear lift gate is standard on the SEL premiums. It also has a foot activated feature. So again, a really cool option. And you get 27 cubic feet of space with the seats up. That's double than what you're gonna get in a conventional sedan like Volkswagen's own Passat. You fold down those rear seats, you get 55 cubic feet of space. So that's 
coming up really close to a lot of compact SUVs like a Mazda CX-5. This is more space than what you're gonna get in the Kia Stinger, a little bit less than what you're gonna get, gonna get in the new Buick Regal Sportback. So moving on to the inside of the flagship Arteon, let's talk about the key fob for the vehicle. You can see this key is slightly different than the other VW keys. They've actually lined the key in some chrome and it's a lot heavier. It's a metal key as opposed to the all plastic key. This intelligent access key is standard. It does come with remote start. All you have to do is just double tap that button over here. And then the engine will start up for you. If you wanna shut off the engine, just double tap that same button and the engine shuts off for you. Now, if you keep the key fob on you, like every other car with keyless entry, just touch this door handle right here where it's that little uh, line is. It locks the doors when you wanna unlock it. VW does a sensor on the back of the handle, just touch that and it'll unlock the door for you. Now, my tester has the Titan Black Napa leather seats. VW also offers uh, other color combinations like a two-tone brown uh, and like a gray interior with the two-tone. Overall, I think the black is definitely a little bit more on the conservative end. I would have liked to see VW offer like a, a red leather interior combo, which is not on the options list as of this filming. So hopefully they'll consider adding that. These seats are like a 12 way power adjustment. They are heated and cooled. Uh, and they also have two person memory and a massage function. The massage function massages your back, uh, which I think uh, is a very unique option, although the Regal GS offers it, but the Regal GS is not quite as good. It's not a very good massaging system. In the VW, I think it works very well. Not quite as good as what you're gonna get in like a Mercedes or a Volvo, but it's very nice. Now you can see the door panels here. It has some real aluminum trim. It has some soft touch panels. And overall, it makes a very nice first impression, a lot nicer than the uh, current generation Volkswagen Passat. Now stepping into the cabin of the new Arteon, it has a very typical sedan step in height. And then you can, as you can see, it's got these frameless rear or the frameless doors. So when you shut the door, it sounds actually still very solid. I was expecting it to sound a little more tinny because of the frameless doors, but it's a very uh, nice sound. Now, when you want to start the vehicle up, just put your foot on the brake and push the button here to fire up the engine. Now you can see that digital cockpit display is gonna be standard on the SEL trims and up. It's a 12 inch display. It's kind of like a dumbed down version of Audi's virtual cockpit. You have an eight inch uh, in car net display here with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and mirror link. So this is actually standard, but if you want navigation embedded nav, you have to get the SEL and trims and up, which honestly the screen itself, I think looks fantastic. I think VW did a good job there. Now this rest of this interior, it's all soft touch materials in the upper part of the dashboard. It's a very soft touch material. It's even soft touch on this lower part of the dashboard and it's soft touch on this portion here. It's soft touch all the way down here. So I wasn't expecting that. That's a really nice detail. Really, it's even soft touch on this side. I was expecting that to be hard, but this whole dashboard here is soft touch, so that's good. It's also soft touch on this part of the door panels where you have a nice uh, metal door handle, more metal trim, a nice padded area here where your elbows would rest. The window switches are one touch automatic for the driver and the front passenger and for the rear. So it's one touch on all four, which is nice. I kind of expected that. Um, you have your power release for your trunk controls there, your headlight controls over there with kind of like a foggy, rainy, rainy day uh, mode that's usually on a lot of VW or German products. The steering wheel is not power tel telescoping, which would have been nice, but you do have a nice uh, level of adjustability. This steering wheel here is basically the same steering wheel of a lot of other VW products. You have a flat bottom here and a specific R badge for the R line models. This SEL premium trim also includes paddle shifters on the wheel and a heated steering wheel, which I don't like where VW is putting the button on this car. It should be a little bit closer to the actual driver. And over here you can see it's got triple zone climate control with heated and cooled seats. Um, you see um, all of them will have the automatic climate control for the three zones. There's a nice area here to put your, your phone and whatnot. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's a standard backup camera or if you hit the menu button here, this trim level gives you a 360 backup camera with automatic parallel parking. The camera resolution and quality is very good among the mainstream brands, although this is kind of blurring the lines between a premium brand and a mainstream brand. So I think VW did a really good job with the technology forefront here. I think a lot of people are gonna like. I don't particularly care for the, you know, the old school analog clock there. There, but it's kind of just a nice little piece. There's a button here to activate the automatic parallel parking or turn on the 360 camera as well, which is good. Now over here, this controls the eight speed automatic transmission. It has a sport mode down here, or you can also toggle between this mode over here where you can go to sport, custom, eco, comfort, and normal. Now, if you guys go to the custom setting, you can adjust what you want it to do based on you know whatever you like. Now, one thing that the DCC system includes, you can actually change the you know a damping of the suspension individually, which is really nice. You can go all the way down to a comfort or a sport mode. You can change the adaptive cruise control, the adaptive front lighting. So it's really great that VW gives you this adjustability, but I hate how this will basically blank out the screen whenever I have the car actually moving. You have to be stopped for it to actually allow that thing to work. Now, when you go to the navigation, 
navigation display. You can see here's the VW navigation head unit. It's very quick to respond. The graphics look fine. It's not like Audi's virtual cockpit or Google Earth, but again, they have to save something for Audi. If you'd like, you can actually put the map in the actual screen over here, just like Audi's virtual cockpit, and you can customize how this screen looks. So I'm really happy to see VW you know, giving us all those features. It's a very impressive looking cabin and the infotainment system has beautiful graphics. It works very well. I think it's going to please a lot of people. Going to the car display over here, you can see there's a performance monitor that shows you a boost gauge, your G meter. I don't know why you'd have that in a lap timer and something like this. This is supposed to be a GT car. Keep cycling through the car. You can see it'll show you different sources. Uh, different, you know, each eco coasts of uh, uh, coaches, a vehicle status and whatnot. And then whenever you want to go back to the the home page, just kind of go click on the uh, radio here and then you can go back to the car or menu display here. That'll take you back to the home page, where it'll take you back to the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay if you'd like. Now, down here, I don't like how there's so many empty buttons. I'm guessing this is probably reserved for the European models, which have slightly different features available. I think they could have moved some of the buttons here or you know, moved these buttons down here. I don't like seeing empty buttons, but you have an electronic parking brake over here. You have two cup holders with a lid that closes. You have a power outlet over there. Your USB is over here. This lid over here also adjusts and it slides, which is good. You have another USB and some more power outlet over there. So that's very nice. The seats, I think they're very comfortable and supportive and they surprisingly hold you in place nicely. The golf compartment you can see is damped and lined with felt. It's a little bit on the small side, but I think it's going to do, uh, do the job for most people. And then above you, you can see it's kind of like a half-ass panoramic sunroof, but at least it's nice that it's a little bit bigger than your standard size moonroof. But overall, the cabin of the new Arteon definitely has a flagship worthiness to it. It doesn't have the cheapness that you get in some of the lower end VW models like a Jetta or even the Passat. Um, and I think a lot of buyers are going to find that there are some Audi-like qualities in here, if not exactly the same Audi-like infotainment system, but I think Volkswagen did a really good job here. Now getting into the back seat of the new Arteon, because the wheelbase has been stretched by about five inches, they really gave us so much more in terms of the rear seat legroom. VW says you have 40 inches of legroom back here. That's about four, six more inches than what you get in the Audi A5 Sportback, about four more inches than what you get in the Kia Stinger, which is roughly the same size vehicle. This has more rear seat legroom than the Volkswagen Passat, which already had a massive back seat. Now there is a hump here that intrudes on the middle passenger space, but as you can see, at five foot seven, I have plenty of headroom. I have plenty of legroom here. I could easily kind of just cross my legs. So this has the space that Americans are looking for in their large sedan, even more space than what you get in the Kia Stinger. Now, in terms of features, you can see there's an armrest that folds down. The SEL Premium models will have their own set of rear climate controls because of that three zone climate control system. You have heated rear seats, three levels back here. And overall, the materials are also soft touch. So they didn't skimp on the quality of the materials. Uh, in the back seats like they typically do on the lower end VW models. So overall, if you're looking for a massive back seat, this has more back seat space than a Toyota Camry, than a Nissan Altima, than Volkswagen's own Passat. And I'd argue that it has more legroom than the uh, Honda Accord as well. I have to check the, the specs, but overall, you're really gonna be nicely surprised when you get into the backseat of the new Arteon. Now under the hood of the all new Arteon, VW makes it pretty simple. There's only one engine choice at launch here in America. It's the company's two liter turbocharged direct injection four cylinder out of the Golf GTI, out of so many other products in their lineup. Now in the Arteon, they did turn up the boost on this model to give it significantly more power than even a GTI. It's rated at 268 horsepower, about 40 more than GTI and 258 pound-feet of torque. That's actually more power than what you're going to get in the four-cylinder that you buy in an Audi A5 Sportback, which has 252 horsepower, but the Audi has slightly more torque. Now, the difference here, it's a it's the MQB platform, which means the engine is mounted transversely. In the Audi, the engine is mounted longitudinally because it's the MLB platform, a slightly different platform. It all goes out through an eight-speed automatic transmission developed by ASIN, and then, of course, front-wheel drive is going to be standard on the Arteon. Uh, four motion all wheel drive is a twelve or is an eighteen hundred dollar option on the other trims. Standard on this SEL Premium trim. Now, if you guys are wondering what the fuel economy is, it's actually been improved over the previous generation CC. It's rated at twenty two in the city, thirty one on the highway. With front wheel drive, premium is recommended. This all wheel drive model does drop it a good amount to twenty in the city. 27 on the highway. As this car sits with front wheel drive, it weighs around 3,600 pounds. With all wheel drive, it increases the weight to around 3,800 pounds. So with around 270 horsepower, with an eight speed automatic with all wheel drive, let's get it out on the road and see how this new Arteon drives.
So with a car as sleek looking as the new Arteon, you're probably wondering how does this thing drive? Well, VW was very uh, clear to point out that this is supposed to be more of a GT car, and it really shows when you drive the thing. It is definitely not quite as spirited and raw feeling as like the Stinger, um, but it feels a lot more refined than the last Buick Regal that I drove. Volkswagen really nailed, I think, the ride quality of this car. The steering also feels pretty good. This car, remember, comes standard with their DCC adaptive dampers, even on the base trim. So you can literally go into the drive modes here and custom tailor the drive mode setting, which VW doesn't let you do while you're um, driving the car. You actually have to be at a stop to adjust the custom mode. But I have to say, I have it in a sport mode now. And remember, this is the two liter turbo four. When you put your foot down, you know, it's the typical sound that this uh, ubiqu ubiquitous engine always makes. It's 268 horsepower, which is a fair good, or it's about 40 more than what you get in the GTI. So I like that VW gave it a power bump. Now, if you're gonna compare it to something like a Nissan Maxima or the Stinger with the Stinger GT, this is down on power, but I think it compares really favorably to the last you know, standard Regal that I drove with the two liter. And remember, you can also get the Kia Stinger with a two liter, which has about 13 less horsepower than this car but you can see going around some sharp corners here, even in its sports setting, the suspension is still relatively soft feeling. The steering is has good feedback. The chassis feels like it can handle a lot more, um, but it kind of reminds me of like a regular Audi, like A5 Sportback. Um, but I will say the Audi, even though it has less horsepower than this car, does feel faster because of that dual, that dual clutch transmission. This eight speed automatic is tuned more for efficiency. It's an ASIN transmission. Uh, it's gonna basically go about its business without much fuss, but if you're an enthusiast and you were expecting more, you know, that's kind of where Volkswagen and could bring in an RT on R. I don't think they're they're going to actually consider that, but it would be a nice addition if they, you know, gave this thing 300 horsepower and gave it like a dual clutch transmission instead. Now, in terms of the visibility for a four-door coupe, it's actually not as bad as I was thinking it was going to be. This A-pillar here is pretty slim. The side mirrors are also a pretty good size. The view out of the front is good, and the view out of the back is not as terrible as some Mercedes four-door coupes uh, that I've driven. And then in typical Volkswagen fashion, safety is pretty uh, high on the priority list. So you've got their front assist is standard. You have automatic emergency braking is standard. You have eight, air eight airbags is standard. If you're looking for adaptive cruise control, though, you have to go to an SEL trim. Uh, and if you want like the lane keep assist, the active park assist, you have to go to this trim, the SEL Premium, um, which is probably the one that a lot I expect a lot of people are gonna buy. I mean, when you're gonna buy a flagship vehicle like this, most people tend to want all the features. If you look at the sales figures of like the Stinger, for example, uh, everyone tends to buy the GT2 or the GT1 uh, trim. So I have it in its sport mode now. It doesn't really have launch control, so I'm just gonna basically floor it from a stop here. And it definitely feels a little soft off the line, but once you go past about 2,500, that's when the turbo kicks in. And I'd say zero to 60 time feels like around seven seconds. It feels a little bit slower than the last Stinger two liter that I drove, which is fine. This car doesn't feel sluggish, but again, it's sleek looks on the outside um, really doesn't correspond with the way it drives. This is more of a comfortable GT car. And that's really the beauty about the Arteon. When you go back into its comfort setting, uh, or switch it out to the custom setting. The suspension is very compliant. The steering gets lighter. It's relatively quiet in here, but you did hear, I did hear some uh, wind noise um, at above 70 miles an hour. It's coming through the pillars over here. Remember, these are a frameless glass windows, so they do contribute to a little more noise. But I mean, if I was gonna take this thing on a long road trip, it's very impressive. Uh, it's very comfortable as well. It's very roomy in here. This has way more space than the Stinger and Regal GS that I last drove because it's a front drive MQB platform and it has more legroom in the back than Volkswagen's own Passat which is which used to be you know their biggest sedan this is now their biggest sedan so I think VW has really placed the RT on well in the lineup and they've priced it really well it drives really nice it feels luxurious I mean honestly driving this car makes me wonder what's the point of getting the Audi I mean sure the a7 has way more horsepower from its you know uh, v6 turbo engine but I actually prefer the looks of this. I haven't driven the newest one yet, but I, I really liked the old one. You could also look at the A5 Sportback, which is again about uh, five inches shorter than this car, so it has less cargo space, less rear seat space. The Audi is a, ta a smidge sportier to drive, not really in terms of the handling, but more in terms of the transmission and the way the car accelerates because it's quicker than this to 60 by like a second and a half. 
Um, but this is still not slow by any means, but I would like to see Volkswagen kind of push the envelope on the RTN a little bit and maybe even tr introduce that R version because they've got the motor from the Golf R that I'm sure could just stick in this thing with a dual clutch uh, and really kind of give it a little bit more of that hard edge feel, especially that would match the, the exterior looks of this car. The seats, I also think they're pretty comfortable. Um, these are the, the Napa leather, and you have that massage feature, which uh, works a little bit better than the last uh, Regal that I had with the massaging seats, the GS model, which kind of just inflated the bolster in and out. This kind of does the same thing, but it doesn't do it in a way that it's hurting my back or stabbing me in the back where I just wanted to turn it off. Like with this car, I don't mind leaving it on because I think that it does a pretty good job. Um, you also get the cooled seats when you get this SEL Premium. So really, SEL Premium is the one to get if you want all the bells and whistles. And VW really did pack a lot of value in this car. It's going to impress a lot of people who are looking for a sedan but has the practicality of an SUV. Remember, the cargo area is more than what you're gonna get in those useless subcompact SUVs. and even gets close to matching some compact SUVs in terms of the full uh, the space when you fold down those rear seats. Now, in terms of fuel economy, I won't be able to talk about that because I'm on this media drive here just outside of Santa Barbara, but I'll be sure to talk about the uh, fuel economy that I get when I have this thing for a, week, a week's worth of testing in the DC area. But at 2027, uh, with this all-wheel drive model, it is a little bit thirstier than the Stinger. You can go down to the front drive model which will get 2231, which isn't bad, but um, there's a reason why the Passat has the significantly detuned version of this engine, because that gets like 2434. I imagine though it's a little underweighted. I mean, this car at 3,800 pounds, you feel the weight pushing it around from time to time. It actually just feels like a very low and wide car. Uh, it does feel slightly heavy at times, um, but you know, the, so does the Stinger and so does the Regal GS. The Regal GS actually is about uh, 300 pounds heavier than this. So of course that will feel even heavier. But uh, overall the driving dynamics of the Arteon will please a lot of people. Just make sure you don't set your expectations too high on the sport end. This is more on the comfort end, which is I think what a lot of the buyers of this car are going to really appreciate. So after spending the day driving the all new 2019 Volkswagen Arteon, I have to admit, I like this car a lot more than I thought I would. You know, as you guys saw from the test drive, it has a very comfortable ride, a quiet interior, it has a powerful and peppy turbocharged engine, it has a smooth eight-speed automatic, and it has a huge backseat and trunk area that's really going to appeal to the lot of American buyers. And really, it don't, where the Arteon falls short is if you're gonna compare it to a Stinger, it's not quite as sporty to drive as a Stinger because that is a rear drive platform. Because of the Arteon's MQB front drive architecture, you get more legroom in the rear and more cargo space and just more interior volume in general. So there's kind of a reason why VW decided to go with the more GT route with the Arteon, and I think it works for this market. Now, speaking of which, the Arteon is finally going on sale in May of 2019, so basically right now as of this filming, and they had to delay the car about a year due to emissions testing. They had to get it certified, which just took longer than they anticipated, but if you're actually looking to purchase an Arteon, what's it going to cost? Well, this car starts at $35,900 for a base SE model with front-wheel drive. Now, if you guys want to spend another $3,000 to go to the SEL, you'll get features like adaptive cruise control, a panoramic sunroof and navigation and real leather seats. It's honestly a pretty good deal. I would recommend at least going for the SEL trims. VW offers an R-Line Sport package for either $1,200 with the 19-inch wheels or $1,800 for the 20-inch wheels like my particular tester has. Now, this particular one is an SEL Premium, so it starts at $44,000, about $5,000 more, but it includes all-wheel drive as standard, which really only makes it $3,000 more expensive. As this one sits, it stickers for around $47,500 with the destination, which I know it is expensive. A lot of people have sticker shock with cars, new cars nowadays, but I think VW has priced it right because if you want a fully loaded version of the Stinger, it's going to cost you around around $52,000. Now granted, this, the Kia has a twin turbo V6, so if you're gonna compare it to the four-cylinder Kia, this is about $3,000 more expensive, which I would honestly pay, especially if I needed the additional room in the back, and I also like the interior and the looks of this car over the, the Kia version. Now, back to my original question of the, the video, is this thing kind of like a budget Audi A7? Well, the A7 is roughly double the price of this car. You're gonna be spending around $70,000 for a base A7. And I think VW has really packed most of the features from the Audi into this Arteon. You're really gonna get a lot of the technology, a lot of the luxury aspects, and really what you're missing is the additional power that the Audi gives you and the brand name. So if you guys don't care about the Audi badge and you're looking for a budget Audi A7, I can confidently say that yes, this is kind of like a budget A7 and I would easily pick this over an A5 Sportback uh, for honestly not much more money. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Volkswagen Arteon. If you're also looking to see those cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.